I was inspired by his heroism, his courage, and the miraculous feat that the crew of 36500 completed that night. However, as I learned more about him, I became equally inspired by his ability to lead and the tremendous impact that he had on all those around him. I've had the opportunity to spend some time in Chatham, and it doesn't take long to see the long-lasting influence that Bernie had. From the immaculately restored 36500 motor lifeboat, to his chief anchors that are still passed down at Station Chatham, to the long line of Coast Guard leaders that he groomed and mentored that still contribute to our Coast Guard today. So many people credit Bernie with making them a better person, and I've come to learn that in addition to being a great Coast Guard hero, he was a humble leader, a caring mentor, a great friend, and a devoted father and grandfather. The crew is anxious to be the next part of Bernie Weber's legacy, and we know that his spirit will always be with us and also to guide future crews of the Coast Guard Cutter from R.C. Weber. Today is a very proud day for the crew, but it is also a proud day for the whole Coast Guard. I've had the privilege of being part of this acquisition project for nearly six years. During my previous tour, I served at headquarters as the sponsor's representative, responsible for developing the requirements of the ship that you see before you. It has been remarkable to watch our words become transformed into steel, aluminum, and a healthy dose of electronics. I would like to say that the process has been all fair winds and following seas, but as with many major projects, our track line has been marked with squalls, some heavy seas, and even some alterations to our estimated time of arrival. But I now realize that it took a full Coast Guard-wide effort across all disciplines to overcome the many obstacles. Hunterman, engineer, electronic techs, lawyers, contracting officers, and I even have to admit some pilots all contributed to make this ship the best it could be. It is a great source of personal pride to have been part of that effort, but also to be part of a service that can pull together with the unity of purpose, team with our many partners to produce such a fine ship. So between honoring the legacy of one of the greatest Coast Guard rescues in history and a massive service-wide effort to build the best ship possible, you can imagine as a new commanding officer, there's some pressure to hold up our end of the bargain. But fortunately, I've been blessed with an outstanding crew. Despite so much uncertainty, this crew finds a way to succeed. I've been inspired each day watching them give their all and work to make things better for the crews that will follow. They truly embody our ship's motto, determination needs no interference. And as much as I would like to continue to brag about the crew, I've learned before never to stand between a crowd and a reception. But before I close, I'd like to recognize some key people who made this day possible. I have to start with our crew members' families, who have sacrificed so much so often. They have supported us from afar, taking care of things at home while we were gone to Louisiana for over five months. And they continue to be patient with our frantic pace since our return. They have earned a special day as much as the crew has. We thank you for your continued support. We couldn't do it without you. Commission Committee, the Port of Miami, and the many members of the community that have contributed to make this ceremony possible. They have truly made this a memorable event. And finally, I'd like to thank the Coast Guard Planning Committee, who's done such a great job pulling the ceremony together. They ensured that the ceremony has been a fitting tribute to Bernard C. Weber, and we appreciate the warm welcome to the Coast Guard's operational fleet. There are many dedicated team members to thank, but I want to recognize Captain Grant, please stand, sir. <laughs> Captain Strava, please stand, sir. <laughs> Commander Bacora, Paul Pulowski, Lieutenant Lilly, and Ensign Whalen. There is no way we could have done this without your leadership and dedication. Thank you very much. Well, I hope everyone will take the opportunity to tour the ship following the ceremony. We are very proud, and I know the crew is anxious to show off all their hard work. Thanks to all of you for taking time from your busy schedules to be here with us today to celebrate this historic event. Executive officer, take charge. Aye, Captain. Well, I guess please rise as Captain Corbin delivers the benediction.
Just company. Okay, I 